Well, I, I get to finish up the series of Psalms for the Summer, Psalm Summer. I mean, it's been absolutely fantastic what we've been hearing, the goodness and blessings of God. And I feel real privileged to be able to talk to you from Psalm 67. And I do hope that you've been downloading, listening to the songs that have been written for each one of these particular messages. Uh, I know I've been personally blessed by them. If you were to ask any athlete who was trying out for a team, if he was looking forward to making the team, I mean, it's crazy. The answer is obvious. That's why he's been working out. Yeah, of course. And if you were to talk to a couple about to be married, if they're looking forward to that, their wedding day, well, yeah, of course they are. Or a child who's coming to the end of the school year and summer vacation looms, if he's looking forward to summer vacation, yes. And if you were to talk to any follower of Jesus, committed follower of Jesus, if they want God's blessing in their lives, I mean, it's an obvious answer to that particular question. Why? Because God's blessings for us is ultimately good. God has good things in store for us, uh, his children. So we, his followers, we long for that. We long for God's graciousness and blessing to be upon us. We want God to bless our entire lives. We want God to bless our homes. We want him to bless us in our particular profession or occupation. We want uh, a good health. We want great uh, relationships and, and marriages. We want God's blessing. But particularly, we should want God's presence, God being with us. That sense of God is there. Why? Because when God blesses us, it's always good because he has good things in store for us. He knows what's best for us, and therefore, we want that too. We know God sees from the end from the beginning, and so or the beginning from the end, and, and we know that he knows the moral, and therefore, he knows what is best for us. So it's a good reason we want God's blessing because we want to be blessed. We want good things. We want a good life, and uh, we want to enjoy his presence. But if it stops there, if it's just about us, if it's just about God blessing us, then we have really missed the boat here. We've missed something. Because this psalm will tell us there's another reason that God needs to bless us. It's more than so we can have fulfilling lives. He wants to bless us and take us to a, another level. That The blessing that he gives to us, we become a conduit for. Not a reservoir for it, but a conduit. He blesses us that it might flow out of us and that we, in turn, through him, might be a blessing to others. God wants to be known in all the earth. You see, this is a beautiful thing about God. God is relational. He, when you read the Bible, it's full of familial language. He's the father. We are his children. There's tenderness involved in all of those description of God the father and we as his kids. He's relational. We see that even at the beginning of creation, whenever he created the world and he created Adam, and he said, it's not good that Adam would be alone. So he made Eve as a helpmeet to be joined to him, that they could partner together and enjoy that relationship together. God is a relational God. And it's interesting to me that my joy when something good happens to me is increased when I'm able to share it with others who are also happy about it. It's, it's, it's like we need each other to have a more complete fullness of joy. So the psalmist starts this way. He says, may God, it's a prayer, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. But why? We want God to bless us. We want his face to shine upon us. We want his blessing. But why? Well, besides the obvious reason that we, we, we want to be blessed personally in our lives, there's another reason. Three things are said. Verse 2, he says, this is why we want God to be gracious to us and have his face shine upon us. 
that his way may be known on the earth. And then in verse 3, that people may know him and praise him. And then verse 7, that the people on the earth may fear him or reverence him and worship him. Bless us that through us, other people will come to know the wonder and majesty, mercy, and grace of our Heavenly Father. God wants people to know him and also to know about him, to know that he's a God of equity and justice and grace and mercy and love. Know about him objectively, but know him as well personally. Know those things in our own heart and life. You see, we don't really have to convince God. God wants to be gracious to us. He wants to bless us. And there is one true and living God, and he wants to be known by all peoples. He wants us to know him personally. He wants us to know him objectively. You know, I just feel like a side note here. There's a scripture that I love so much in Psalm 85.10. And I, I like an earlier translation. It goes like this. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. This is the image that comes to my mind when I think about God. Truth and mercy come into a room and sit around the table. And truth is carrying in his hand a, a folder, and it's about me. And it's not very complimentary. It has all these messes in my life. All true. Well, he did this, he did that. All true. And mercy is there. And something is happening between mercy and truth meeting together and discussing me or discussing you together. What comes out of that room is this. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. In other words, a way forward was found through our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I will take upon myself the failures and sins of John. I'll pay that price. And there was a transferal. He took my sin and gave me his righteousness. Truth and mercy met together. But in the end, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Now that's something that, that's a blessing. That's something we want to share with others. We want others to experience that same kind of peace together. You see, God blesses us. He said in this psalm that the nations would be blessed. That is, all other kind of ethnic people groups would be blessed. And since God wills to be known, and since God is a relational God, and he wants a personal relationship and wants us to enjoy that, how does the writer of this psalm respond? Well, he responds in prayer. And so, all right, God wants to be known. I'm going to pray about that. And he prays. He prays that God would not only bless him, but would bless his people in such a way that they would come to know the greatness and graciousness of God. So he prays this way, verse 1. God, be gracious to us and bless us and cause your face to shine upon us. And this is the reason, because we want to be a conduit that through us, your way may be known on the earth. See how we are blessed. We pass that blessing on, your salvation among the nations. Now, this is foundational truth for us. God blesses us, not just for us, but for the sake of others. We see it throughout the Bible. There was a man named Abraham, and in Genesis 12, God said to Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. And I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make your name great. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. I'm going to bless you, Abraham, that in you, all the families of the earth would be blessed. Isaiah put it this way. He says, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. You see, Psalm 67 is uh, an expression of God's purpose in prayer and should elicit prayers from us. It's the expression of God's purpose that would, should motivate us to pray. You see, I'm 
I'm weak. I can't do everything. I, I can't go to all these different nations, and neither can you. But my area of weakness is not the issue. Because in praying, my weakness and inability lines up with God's all-powerfulness, which renders my weakness non-existent or redundant. See, the second week of August, Jubilee Church is committed to a week of prayer. We do this fairly regularly. Uh, Every few months, we will gather for a week of prayer. And in prayer, something amazing happens. You know, I'm going to tell you, I went places this morning. I went to Istanbul, Turkey. I went to the Arab Peninsula. I went to Mozambique because I prayed this morning. And when I prayed, I prayed for a young couple that a few years ago we sent to Istanbul who are doing amazingly well in sharing the gospel and seeing a church grow and respond to the goodness of God. Their blessing the nations. I prayed for another young couple. It's interesting. They actually met here at Jubilee Church. They were doing that kind of gap year thing where uh, once you graduate from high school, before you go off to university, you take a, get, you take a year. And they came to us because we, we have a little program and interned with us, and we were and trained by us and served here. After that year ended, unbeknownst to us, <laughs> A romance developed. They became married and ultimately felt like God wanted them to serve in the Arab Peninsula. Remember praying for them and sending them there and now reading the reports of how they're doing there. I prayed for them this morning. I prayed for our friends uh, Scott and Claire Marks in Mozambique the things that they are going through. You see, in prayer, we, we go to all these different places. This is the beauty, the unlimited power of what God has given us to entreat him on behalf of his purposes for others. You see, you pray the expression of God's purpose and God delights in our partnership with him. Jesus taught us to pray that way. He said, when you pray, pray this way. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We're together in this with our heavenly father. We're blessed by him and that through us, that blessing might flow out to others. And God promises to bless us in particular because he wants us to be a blessing and to the nations. And to the degree that we are, it seems more blessing seems to come. God loves that. He loves to see his life and purpose increase in people throughout the earth. And so we pray. We pray for God's blessing, not only in us, but upon the nations. We pray, oh God, help me find a way to where I can share the goodness and the graciousness that you have so abundantly supplied to me. Now, Jubilee Church in St. Louis, it's been an amazing church, what God has done for us. And I think the reason for that is God is most likely to bless us when we bless the nations or when we bless others. Since God blesses us for the sake of others and other people groups and other nations, he's most likely to bless us when Uh, we're not a reservoir or a conduit when we plan and train and send and pray for his blessing on others. You see, God wants to bless all people groups on the earth. He, He wants a family made up of every race, every nation, every ethnic group together that have found our commonality in our Heavenly Father. We is all his children. And so we pray for our nations. And you say, well, I'm not a missionary. No, no, I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm saying, how about you adopt a nation? Read about it. Learn about them. Begin to pray for them. Pray for God's kingdom to come 
there on that part of the earth. You know, Jeremiah was a prophet, and the scripture says that God was present and formed him in the womb. And then at his birth, God consecrated him to be a prophet to the nations. But it's interesting because Jeremiah never traveled to the nations. Well, how could he be a prophet to the nations? Well, he had them in his heart. He learned about them. He prayed for them. He wrote oracles to them. And in that, he was a prophet to the nations. We can do that. That's something that all of us in this room can do today. God blesses the church that pours itself out for uh, unreached people, that loves people that, oh, and that no one else loves, actually. It's a why he's blessed, Jubilee Church. We've, we've been, from our very inception, I'll mention it in a minute, we've, from our very inception, this has been the way we've been. More recently, uh, we sent uh, the Neelys, uh, Dylan and Rebecca, to Kansas City. Now, he's a vital part of our church. But we want to give away to the others that God's kingdom would come to those places. And by the way, that church is doing really, really well. If you're listening from the Kansas City area, go visit King's Church. Meet Dylan. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And then we've given lots of money away, actually hundreds of thousands of dollars since our inception to other people, to other churches, and into other nations we've invested. Even this week, uh, Brian Mowry is in New York where he's meeting with three uh, 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 of our church planters, uh, men who are starting churches in New York and in New Jersey. And he's impressed with the fact that it's not easy there and how they are pressing on. We're there. We're investing Brian there to be an encouragement and a strength because that's our DNA. We, we give and we've interned leaders and we've trained people who want to start new churches, and we've been generous with people's needs. We've, we've even attempted to set up some funding to help people adopt children that would otherwise not maybe have parents. A significant portion of our energy and resources is given outside of ourselves, and therefore, God blesses us because we've caught on to this. He blesses us in order that we can be a conduit to bless others. We facilitate conferences to bring in church leaders from all around that we might strengthen them and we might encourage them. Our staff works to put all that together. You see, we're most fulfilled when we join God in his purpose and to reach out to others, to be immersed in the river of God's blessing uh, and, and to share what he's done in tangible ways with others. You know, the Dead Sea is dead. You know why it's dead? Because it has an inflow, but it has no outflow. It's a Dead Sea. I love Lake of the Ozarks. It has an inflow and it has an outflow. And it teems with life, birds and animals and, and fish, because it's a life-giving place, because it has an inflow and an outflow. That's what makes a church a life-giving place. It receives God's blessing and it it becomes an outflow or a conduit of God's blessing. So we reach out to others. And so I just want to challenge you who are engaged in church life, not to be a Sunday attender only, but to be truly engaged, not to be, just be a consumer, but someone who wants to give themselves to be a blessing as well. Be involved in a small group. Open up your home. These are things that you can do to be a blessing. Be a part of that prayer meeting week. <laughs> uh, you'll be blessed if you do. Be willing to serve and to step up because we receive God's blessing to be a blessing. The point is, in redemptive history, it's... The, the church is not a cruise ship, it's a battleship. And basically, it's wartime. To, to set captives free, let me just tell you about the name Jubilee. 
in Scripture, uh, Isaiah 61 talks about this year. The year of Jubilee in the Bible was the, every 50 years, and it was when uh, all who had become enslaved were set free. All who had debt had their debt erased. Uh, and, and it was a year of freedom and joy. And Jesus takes that moment from Isaiah 61, and in Luke chapter 4, he repeats it. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor or to proclaim the year of Jubilee. That's why we took the name Jubilee, because we want to be that kind of an outflow to preach the good news, proclaim the poor, set at liberty the captives and those who can't find a way to bring sight and direction. It's never just about hanging out and doing uh, Christianese uh, activities. You know, we had a pretty small beginning. In 1997, we were 22 people in St. Louis, but from the very beginning, we wanted to be a conduit of blessing, and we committed ourselves to that. And from that beginning, 24 years ago, uh, we, as we determined to bless people and become a reproducing church, from a very small beginning to now a family of churches here in the United States, we, we have expanded into Georgia, Tennessee, Massachusetts, Maine, uh, New Hampshire, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Iowa, Washington, and Idaho, Oregon, Rhode Island. I'll, I'll probably miss a few states here. But even into other nations. We have churches that are part of our family here in the USA, in Mexico, and in Canada. But we're also part of a global family that uh, is working in 70 different nations. What about you? How can you be a part of all that in the next 24 years? I urge you, let's not settle now. Let's not get on cruise control. Don't let God's blessing stop with you. We as a people, you as a person, as a church, let's be a conduit. We have a big God. We have a big vision. And God blesses us. We're, we're, I'm encouraging you. Come on, join with us. Be engaged in the week. I believe it's beginning August 8th. Be involved. We're going to come together for a week of prayer, and this is how we're going to pray. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us because we want your way known to others. We want them to know your saving power. We have the blessing of a new building in our fourth location in Sunset Hills, of which I'm a part. And uh, when we went to get the, the approval of the alderman, we were turned down. I think we went back two or three times and we were in prayer and I felt God said, I've turned the mind of an obstinate Pharaoh to let Israel go. I can do the same with these. And I remember praying about that, feeling that gave me hope and faith. And when we went back the last time, amazingly, they were all in agreement and gave us approval to build this building. So when you come if you come to St. Louis, whatever building you come to, you look around, or if you go to Washington, if you go to Lake of the Ozarks, those things are a statement of God's blessing. Nothing is impossible. So I, I want to urge you all to go all in. Don't hesitate. No retreat, no regrets, no reserve. Give yourself. Do what you can. God will open up other avenues by which you can be a blessing. You've been blessed, and I've been blessed for this reason, to be a blessing. And I hope that many of you can join with us that week of prayer time as we pray and we give ourselves to a God that has promised us, if we pray, your kingdom come, may it happen here on earth, even as it is in heaven. Look forward to seeing uh, many of you then, and I know that many of you are watching, uh, not from our particular area, but uh, you can still join us in prayer and let God speak to you about how you might be engaged in being a blessing to your neighbors, friends, 
family that are even at your doorstep.